Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Well, uh, following up styrofoam is a bit like following up a celebrity in the packaging world, so uh, hopefully I'll, I'll do it justice. Um, so it's great to be here, and I'd like to share a short talk on a big subject. So what is the future of taste going to be? And by that, we mean the future of food and drink. And food is something that we all need. It's the thing that brings us all together. We all share it, but it's incredibly individual to all of us. And what I'm going to share with you now is a bit of a perspective on how we're going to communicate that in the future. So what does it mean for design, communication, and how it will be brought to life. And we started our research into the subject with this picture, really, and I hope you can all see it. We've pixelated it quite heavily because this is not about brand, this is about product. And when we saw this picture, we thought, really? Because obviously, food and the future of it is about opening out into an intense world of pleasure. I mean, that's the heart of food, really. We functionally need it, yes, but we all look forward to it, don't we? You wait for your lunch break, you're talk to your friends and colleagues about what you had for dinner, what you're going to have for dinner tomorrow, who's going to be there. And we thought, does that really sum that up? Is this what we've got to look forward to? And why would you package something that probably, bar a coconut, has the second best, best packaging in nature anyway? And then we saw this picture and we got a little bit more worried because uh, just in case you weren't sure it's taste bud friendly... <laughs> and only 105 calories and full of vitamins. And we thought, is this how disconnected we've become from food and the food that we eat? And that made us a bit sad. And it's, it made us start to ask this question, really. When did our food become so complex? When did this sort of thing, where it's a natural food, it's a fruit, it's something that has always existed, become so far away from us that we're vending it and we're packaging it and we're creating layers that really it shouldn't need? And we like to talk about things in terms of shift, the big shifts that are happening in culture that are moving the world forward and show us how we're going to live in the future. And it's the shift that culture's taking. And so what I wanted to talk to you about today was the shift that we see, which is this world of food, sometimes very natural, that's become fake, and the movement we hope that it will take towards becoming alive again, so full of real taste and natural values that really capture all the greatness that exists in food that seems to be sort of getting a bit distanced from us. And especially for yourselves that are going to be working in the hospitality industry, this is incredibly important that we really capture the greatness that's inherent in food. So we continued looking at what was out there at the moment, and we saw this product too, and sometimes it's not about the product, it's about the way it's presented. And so this is one serving of real fruit. So there's goodness there, 92% real fruit, but it doesn't really look like that, does it? I mean, you've got some whizzy strawberry going on there. So it's really about the way it is communicated. And even here, where you can see a little bit more of a fruit, you've got sort of simulated droplets on there. And it, does that really capture the wonderful taste and textures of natural fruit? Does it look natural? And then... Another big part of food is showing the connection to where it's come from. And I don't think that really looks like it's ever seen a turkey. I don't know what you think. Um, and a big part of the importance in this, too, is the future generations that are now in the world and the disconnection that this sort of shows to them as well. Because we've got children now that have never seen a fish that isn't breaded. And this kind of thing sort of makes that problem bigger because they might like to think they're eating dinosaur because that's turkey too. <laughs> and they might be a bit disappointed to find out that it's not. Um, but really, this doesn't help us educate the future generations on what they should be eating or why. And things like this as well. We lead increasingly busy lives. It's not going to get quieter. Our lives are not going to slow down. And so we sort of feel like packaging has speeded up to sort of accompany that. But is that the right thing? Do we want this kind of artificial look and feel? And we asked ourselves this question too, have we been led by technology? So as the capabilities of things like Photoshop have increased, the design has sort of been led by that perhaps as well. We're losing actually what was inherent, all the goodness inherent in foods, and we've got this sort of hyper-realness that's coming out in the way that we're designing to the point where 
we're losing all of the goodness in food and you've got this sort of artificial, quite stimulated little food that actually loses any connection to the food that it was or should be. And we thought this quote is great. Um, Michael Pollan, fantastic food writer from the States, do read um, some of his work if you can. And we think it's quite good advice. I don't think he was specifically talking about packaging at the time that he said it. But I think when you take that quote and you look at it and apply it to something like this, now there's obviously always cultural nuances and we work quite a lot uh, internationally. So we have to think about this kind of thing and what's appropriate for one market is not appropriate for another. And it's always important to remember that. But can anyone tell me what they think this is? It's actually fish. Um, which is a little bit more apparent here, and it looks quite happy, doesn't it? So it's, it's, at least you can tell this is a crab. <laughs> um, but because you've got these cultural nuances, it doesn't mean that actually that's been used in different ways across the marketplaces, because this is Eastern to Western. These sort of bad food habits have been picked up and used everywhere. And we wondered whether perhaps the idea that it was too simple a product was what was causing us to sort of get overexcited with our design. So the fact that even the simplest food stuff has become really complex. And as I said earlier, <laughs> we've got into this habit of rather than engaging our children and the next generation, the generation that are going to take over from us, we've started distracting them with this kind of design rather than engaging them with what they should eat. So when you're busy trying to feed your child in the morning to get them to school and they don't want to, you're doing this to them rather than telling them what they should eat and why. So we started asking ourselves some big questions. Does food communication today focus on engagement or distraction? All of these banners, whizzes, flashes, bombs, flying milk, does it engages with our food. No wonder we don't know so much about it anymore. Is it the fault of advancing technology rather than clear representation of our food and actually showing people what's inside the pack and what's great for them? And as a result, has it become more about the brand than the product? And what's important for us to know is what does this mean for the future? So our perspective is this. Understanding our food should be instinctual. You have instant reactions, what your palate favours, all of our health has different start points. We should have more, and we used to have more, of an instinctual reaction to food. And it used to be around us a lot more as well, pre-industrialisation. We were more in touch with the process that our food took. We built cities near sources of it. But actually manufacturers dis distanced us from that as well. And it's changed the nature of food available to us as well. So today, we can eat what we like all the time. We can get all manner of food, see, in season, out of season. But what's happened is that's created a bit of a problem, a barrier against our natural instincts of what should we should eat. We don't sort of think, is this the season that's in right now? We think, what do I want? And actually, it's given us too much variety in a way, and it's given us this. And uh, one of our favourite banners from this is, one of the food packages said that it had over one pound of food in this box. <laughs> um, so you've got all of these barriers, really, that are coming into food packaging today and food communication. And what we did to try and remedy this was we sought new ways of reconnecting to our food. So that's where organic became so important. And what we really embraced about it was the fact that it started to look like real food again. It had colours, textures, it looked like the earth that we hoped it had come from, the softer typefaces. It was truly more organic in its look and feel. And brands like this one, this is Globus Organic from Germany, showed us the food product once again. We could see and appreciate it, and it was embraced by the mass market. Because of that, you saw all of the big multiples creating their own way of doing it in different versions. And this quote, I think, really sums up it up nicely for us. And what's interesting about this is it just shows how the same values remain true through time. This was actually from 550 BC. Confucius, the uh, Chinese philosopher, the way you cut your meat reflects the way you live. And what organic food did was remind us that it's about values. It's a, you are what you eat, quite literally, said a bit earlier, in a slightly different way. 
And what I wanted to show you today was, as Matthew said earlier, you want to see ideas. And these are some of the ideas that we find really interesting about what people are doing at the moment that are bridging that gap and reconnecting us with the food, the goodness of food that we've been losing. So Jovial here are a brand from the States who have ways of heirloom farming, and they're going back and finding ways that, again, have been lost in creating a brand for the future. So the most ancient wheat done in the modern way, going back and reclaiming those ways of farming. We're simplifying. So here is a brand, a brand sorry, from Barcelona, Fruta Blanche, designed by Atipus Design. And what they're doing, they actually are a family brand that canned and preserved food for um, their family for years and years before it became commercially available. But they show it in a beautiful way by really heroing the product and being very clear in the way that they describe the, f the food that they make in their messaging. 30% sugar, 70% fruit. They're not lying or saying there's no fruit in there, but they're being clear and direct with their messaging and their communication. We've got a brand here, Blueprint Cleanse, that was created by two ladies in the States when one of them had a cold that she couldn't get over. And they've made a practical solution through juicing. And again, one of the big things that we'll be thinking about in the future is how we optimize our health going forward. And they've created a clear, simple system, different ingredients, I'm sorry, it's slightly fuzzy, um, but different ingredients for each day, showing what you should have on those different days and there's a lot of stimulus here so we'll be tweeting out some of the links to these brands so you can have a look later if you're interested um, and it's about having a greater awareness of nature's attributes as well so here we've got the food doctor and it's literally taking the icon of an apple a day keeps the doctor away but going back referencing nature with these beautiful color palettes and health isn't something that we should dip in and out of. It's a lifestyle. It's about changing that and incorporating it into your everyday life. And that's what they suggest. It's about eating better forever. And so you can see again here, they've got some icons really that make it simple, seeing what's in the recipe, high protein, fiber source, keeping it clean and simple and representing the food that's in the pack, putting that first. And then Frusch in Sweden, making a direct and engaging connection through the language that they use as well. So championing the fact that it's better than Botox, and we can hope it is. Uh, and they believe in bananas and really heroing um, through language and having a bit of fun with it, capturing the attention of generations for tomorrow and making food work in harmony with our daily lives. So quite often when we're doing talks, we get asked, well, this kind of thing is all very nice, but it's quite elite examples, isn't it? What does it mean for the mainstream? And I think this is where an example like this is really nice. This is out-of-stock design from Singapore. And they are working for Burger King here, and they've gone back. They were tasked with creating a new environment uh, for Burger King in Singapore, and they've gone back to the idea of Burger King being flame grilled. So they've gone back outside with the burger, um, and they've taken really the sort of joy of eating outside all together and started to bring that into the Burger King environment. You can see using little plant pots here in in the environment. So it's, again, it's really celebrating what the product was originally about and not perhaps the way that mass mainstream codes and cues have sort of shaped it due to the pressures of things like convenience. It's about exploring the possibilities for tomorrow. So here's a very exciting example that we like to talk about a lot. This is Juice Baker, who's actually an artist. He's uh, Dutch and he is using shipping containers here that use no waste. It's all powered by cooking oil, actually. And he's created these environments that he travels around Australia with. I think they're headed to Milan. And it's about creating a new world that makes the best of all that's available to us. So this is showing how beautiful we can get food to look if we stop trying to manipulate it that hard. So these are recipes. It's not about putting food combinations together that are just nice colors. These are actual recipes by Waitrose in the UK, who have created a new range called Love Life. They've steered away from the sort of health and diet codes and cues of packaging and, and branding. And they're just hearing what's beautiful about the food itself. So we hope that the future of taste will not be such a simple exchange. We won't forego all the goodness of food in terms to just seek speed. 
We hope it's about deep understanding. It's about moving away from simple exchanges and artificial aesthetics to a greater appreciation of our food and all of the wonders that it holds, all of its virtues and possibilities. We hope it's a genuine appreciation of the process behind it, all of the expertise, all of that time-honoured tradition, again, that we're in danger of losing. We want a more transparent relationship with our food. We want more information and accountability about it, and we hope that that's what the future will bring. And we hope it's about a greater connection to cause and effect. So we're all responsible by the food choices we buy, by the food manufacturers we turn to, and we hope that we'll dig beyond the surface and appreciate and involve ourselves in experiences and choose experiences that have a positive legacy for the future. Thank you very much.